Hi, welcome to HTAC's YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to guide you through one of HTAC IPphone's advanced features, auto provisioning. First, I'll explain what auto provisioning is. Then I'll list out the advantages of auto provisioning and show the operation process step by step. After that, we'll take a look at solutions for PBX platforms. And finally, we'll learn how to carry out troubleshooting steps. Okay, so firstly, what is auto provisioning? Just like any other electronic devices, IP phones, when we get one, the first thing we need to do is to configure it. We can do it directly on the interface of the phone, or log on to the phone's web page and operate on the browser. This is okay when we only have one or only a few devices to configure. When we have hundreds or even thousands of devices to configure, it's no longer efficient. In this case, provisioning is a much better way. Provisioning is to put configuration files on a server, and the device sends a request to the server. Then the server provides the files to the device. Auto-provisioning is to upgrade phone configuration and firmware automatically through a server. Now we know what auto-provisioning is, the advantages of it is obvious. It can realize easy deployment since auto provisioning allows a large batch of IP phones to be provisioned all at the same time, remotely and automatically. During the entire process from ordering the products to installing them, the IP phones aren't even touched. By the time the user has a phone, when it's powered on and connected to network, provisioning is conducted, and the user doesn't have to do the provisioning one by one manually. Therefore, it can substantially reduce human errors and save a lot of time and effort. And now, let me explain to you how to do it. It contains four steps. Prepare files for other provisioning. Prepare server for other provisioning. Get a server address, which can be done in three ways. And finally, execute other provisioning. And now, I'm going to take you through them one by one. First step is to prepare files for auto provisioning. Firstly, you need to manage configuration files and resources files. So, what are those files? Configuration files contain parameters that affect the features of the phone. Resources files, on the other hand, are the files used as resources to realize the configured features. Take ringtone as an example. Say we want to set the phone's ringtone as a song called Jingle Bells. When you have done the configuration, the configuration files would tell the device that when there is a phone call, use Jingle Bells as a ringtone. But those files don't have the song inside. In order to really hear the song when someone calls you, you've got to also have the audio file Jingle Bells as a resource file to work together with the configuration file to be able to play it as a ringtone. You can use the configuration files to deploy and maintain a mass of IP phones automatically. There are two types of configuration files that HTAC IP phones support, common CFG files and Mac CFG files. The common CFG file is effective for all phones of the same model. It uses a fixed name as CFG something dot XML, where something depends on the IP phone model just like these. And this is the information contained inside a common CFG file. Whereas, the max CFG file is only effective for one specific phone. It uses the 12-digit MAC address of the IP phone as a file name, like these. It is expected to be updated per phone, such as the registration information. Resource files are more used in the personalized configuration of specific customers. Before provisioning, you may need to edit and customize your resource files. Here, you can see the usual file types and their file extensions such as ring file, language file, wallpaper file, phone book file, etc. Resource files are optional, but if the particular feature is being employed, then the corresponding resource files are fundamental. Now you have your configuration files and resource files ready. 
The second step is to prepare a server for other provisioning. A place for you to put those files, ready for download. HTAC IP phones support using FTP, TFTP, HTTP, and HTTPS protocols to access the provisioning server to download files. In order to use protocols mentioned about to download files from the server, you could use applications like Apache, TFTPD, or the SAMP, which support these protocols. In this video, we won't go into further details about how to use these applications. After configuring the suitable server with corresponding protocol, you could download configuration files and resource files from the configured server. Now your files are ready, and the provision server is ready. The next step is to get the server address. There are three different ways to do it. In default, the priority of the three ways is plug and play, aka PMP, over DHCP options, over config path, which includes RPS, zero touch, and manually. In the phone settings, you can adjust the priority to your desire. And now, let's take a look at the operation of each of these ways. Plug and play or PNP, as its name suggests, will allow the IP phone to get the provisioning server address as soon as it's powered on and connected to network. Because HTAC IP phones could multicast the PNP subscribe message to search for the PNP server, any PNP server activated in the network would respond with a SIP notify message, and the provisioning server address is contained in this message body, as is shown here. After the IP phone obtains the provision server address from the PMP server, it will connect to the provision server and download files during startup. When the files are successfully downloaded, provisioning is done. To use this method, log on to the phone's webpage, click Management, Out Provision. In the PMP Active field, tick the Yes checkbox, then PMP is activated. And now the second way, DHCP options. DHCP is short for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is mainly used to assign dynamic IP address to network clients. HTAC IP phones could broadcast DHCP requests, and the server will respond configured DHCP message to the phone. Inside the protocol, there are parts called options, and when the messages are sent, the option including provision server address will be found in the received DHCP response message. The phone uses option 43 or option 66 or option 66 plus 67 for obtaining the provision server address. And when the phone has a provision server address, provisioning can be conducted. To use this method, log on to the phone's webpage, click Management, Add a Provision. Tick the Yes checkbox in the Allow DHCP Option Server field. After the IP phone obtains the provision server address from the DHCP server, it will connect to the provision server and perform other provisioning during the startup. And the third way is to obtain the provision address through config server path, including by RPS, zero touch, or do it manually. First, let's talk about RPS. RPS stands for a service provided by HTAC called Redirection and Provisioning Service. When you want to use it, please contact us, and we'll create a RPS account for you. Then the MAC and URL information will be registered on HTAC RPS server. To activate it, log on to the IP phone's webpage, and write the RPS server address in the config server path field. And now, let me explain how RPS works. The core of RPS is redirection. Before using RPS, we've got to set our RPS's URL as our config server path. When the phone tries to get the configuration file, our RPS server recognizes its name, namely MAC address, then redirects the phone to the server where the configuration files are. So, the phone is redirected to the configuration server. The phone tells the server it wants configuration files and the server gives files to the phone. 
Thus, provisioning is a success. There are several advantages of using RPS. Clients can either use the RPS server in a public network or in an internal network. With RPS, we no longer have to change the configuration manually, so it's very convenient to use. RPS can have open third-party ports, which can work with some supported PBXs, HTAC device management system, HTAC provision tool, etc. By the way, for HTMS and HTTP, please check out other videos on HTAC channel to see how to use them. RPS has high usability. It can redirect the phone to where the class wants to get configuration. And finally, it saves effort and time, especially for public network RPS. As long as the client can access RPS, all we need to do is to conduct remotely. Zero Touch is a DSS key that you can set, which allows you to configure the network parameters and provision server address via the IP phone's user interface. When you press it, if you press OK during the wait time, which can be set on the phone's web page, you will enter network setting interface. After setting, press Next, you get to the auto provision setting interface. After setting that, press Next again, and the auto provision is conducted. Manually is to manually conduct a one time auto provisioning. To do it, log on to the phone's web page in Management Auto Provision. Write server address in the config server path field and click Add Provision Now. Provisioning will be conducted immediately. Now we have everything ready. The IP phone can finally connect to the configured auto provisioning server and execute auto provisioning. Now I'll introduce some operations on the phone's web page at Management Auto Provision. Power On Start means the phone performs the auto provisioning when the IP phone is powered on. Repetition period means the phone performs the auto provisioning at regular intervals. The default interval is 10,080 minutes. Week by week means the phone performs the auto provisioning at a random time every week or every certain weeks, depending on the weekly update interval you set. You can configure the days of the week, as well as the begin time and end time of the day for the IP phone to perform an auto provision process weekly. You can also specify the delay time to perform other provisioning when the IP phone is inactive at a regular week. For example, you can configure the IP phone to check and update new configuration only when the IP phone has been inactivated for 30 minutes between 1 to 5 o'clock in the morning every Sunday at a four-week interval. Custom random update means the phone performs other provisioning at a random time within a specific interval defined by you. You can also click Auto Provision Now after uploading the files into the server to do it manually, as we stated before. This method is more useful for initial provision, and the result of it, namely, is successful or not, needs to be verified in time. What's more, you can activate more than one method for auto provisioning at the same time. For example, you can activate the Power On Start and Repetition Period modes at the same time. The IP phone will perform other provisioning when it is powered on, and also at the specified interval. The principle behind the other provisioning is like this. No matter which way you use, the other provisioning process is triggered by a SIP notify message, which contains the header, event, colon, check, hyphen, sync. When the phone receives it, it responds 200 OK, and the process will start. If the header of the SIP notify message contains an additional string, reboot equals true, the phone will reboot immediately and then perform the auto provision process. Now let's take a look at the auto provision solutions for PBX platforms, including the PBXs which can perform auto provisioning on the system, and the PBXs that can't. Certain PBXs, such as 3CX, can perform auto provisioning on its system and don't need help of other tools. We made HTAC IP phones perfectly compatible with these PBXs. So, when using these PBXs, the entire auto provision process can be conducted smoothly. While preparing files for auto provisioning, you can edit the configuration files easily because HTAC provides templates for these PBXs, and the parameters of the HTAC phones 
are compatible with the parameters on those PBXs. Also, these PBXs provide server for other provisioning, so there's no need for an external server. For a PBX, there can be several ways to get the server address. For example, 3CS can use local LAN, 3CX SBC, direct SIP to get a server address. Local LAN and 3CS SBC use PMP. Direct SIP uses RPS. And finally, the auto provisioning process will be executed. The PBXs, which are compatible with HTAC IP phones, such as 3CX, can realize plug and play for this process. Some PBXs can't perform auto provisioning on its system, such as Unify. For these PBXs, we can still use HTAC Device Management System, in short, HDMS, or HTAC Provision Tool, in short, HPT, which are both device managing tools developed by HTAC to realize auto provisioning without any difficulty. So, what are these tools? HTMS is a device management system with a web page type operating interface. It integrates multiple cutting edge functions, making anyone able to manage a corporation's communication system like a professional. It can work across LANs, so after setting configuration files, it can provision through RPS or PMP. HPT is a software installed locally on the computer used cooperatively with HTAC IP phones on Windows platform. It integrates several functions to complete the provisioning of HTAC phones conveniently and quickly. It can work within the local LAN. After setting the configuration files, it can provision through PMP. For detailed operation instructions of these tools, please check out other videos on our channel. In the case when other provision doesn't take effect as expected, please perform troubleshooting according to the following steps. First and foremost, please check the network environment. As we know, the entire auto provision process can only happen under a functional network environment. Second is to check the provision server. If the server address is a domain name, then the domain name must be resolved. If DNS resolution isn't successful, then the server can't be accessed. And the third step is, when RPS is used for auto provisioning, you need to check whether the phone's MAC is added to the RPS server. To use RPS, you need to pre-configure the MAC address of the phone in the RPS server and assign the provisioning server for the MAC address and make sure the provisioning server URL is available. The fourth step is to check the configuration files. You've got to check if there are matched configuration files on the server and you also need to check if the files are encrypted. If the files are encrypted, and the IP phone isn't equipped with AES secret key, then it can't decrypt the files, thus can't use them. If that is all okay, then please check if there is any interference from other provisioning method. As we mentioned before, the priority of provisioning methods can be configured at the phone's web page at Management, Auto Provision, Config Upgrade Priority, and the default priority is Plug and Play, aka PMP over DHCP options, over config path. Once configuration can't be acquired by a higher priority provisioning method, the phone would try to get configuration via a lower priority method. And finally, you can check if web page setting priority is enabled. You can find it on the phone's web page at Settings, Preference. If it is enabled, the user will be protected from letting the manual configuration on the phone's web page and LCD screen be overridden, thus preventing the auto provisioning from taking place. That is all about HTAC IP phone's auto provisioning. To know more about our products and service, please visit www.htech.com. For technical issues, send an email to support at htech.com. For business, please write to sales at htech.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.